Well, of course, everything we do is strategically about Internet of Things and industries, in healthcare, in finance, in telecommunications, in manufacturing, in transportation, logistics, and so forth. What we're doing is proving the value of Internet of Things technology, and Internet technology in general, in industries that have been almost unaffected by Internet technology since the beginning of the web. I've been running the Object Management Group for uh, 27 years now. Actually, last week was 27 years. And we're very good at bringing together ecosystems of organizations, that is, commercial companies uh, and uh, standards organizations and open source organizations, government agencies, research organizations, universities, to figure out the value of some new technology, some new approach of building something, or to build standards. We were approached three years ago by a group of companies that had the idea of building test beds to learn how to apply Internet of Things technology in industries, in manufacturing, in transportation, in life sciences, and so forth. And we created this organization, went public on March 27, 2014, with five founding companies, AT&T, IBM, Intel, Cisco, and General Electric. We're now almost 260 companies from 31 countries, and we have 27 of our test beds running now all over the world, in Germany, in Ireland, in the United States, Japan, Korea, where we're learning about best practices for applying Internet of Things technology in industries. The IIC is different from other organizations in pretty clear ways. The most important is, besides the fact that it's large and growing, our focus on test beds. The idea is it makes sense that we need standards for interoperability, portability, security, and privacy in the Internet of Things in industry. Of course, industry requirements are much higher in terms of robustness, security, privacy, and so forth. But it doesn't make sense to develop standards when you don't know what standards you need. How do you find out what standards you need? By building test beds. How do you learn how to apply Internet of Things technologies in industries? By building test beds. So that's what we're on about. We have, as I've said, 27 test beds in uh, many different areas, in manufacturing, in transportation, in precision agriculture, and many other areas. And what we're doing there is we are learning about how to apply Internet of Things technologies in many industries, and we're learning what standards are necessary. We share those requirements and priorities to standards organizations so they can develop standards that are actually useful, that are actually necessary, and that's what we've been doing for the last two years. So it's clearly valuable to join the Industrial Internet Consortium, or IIC, because that's where you learn about how to find other players in the ecosystem. IoT is an ecosystem play. Nobody is going to be the IoT winner because it's all about sharing information across corporate boundaries, across national boundaries, across any boundary you can think of. So you need an ecosystem of companies to work with. All companies, especially large companies, have an ecosystem. They can find some players. I can find them all because they're all with us. Obviously, it's valuable. We have almost 260 members after only two years of operations from 31 different countries with the, building those 27 test beds. But the clear value is to learn together how to build the ecosystem, how to work together, how to apply best practices of Internet of Things application in industry. Uh, and more than that, we also have a marketing group and a thought leadership group where we craft messages that make sense to all of us that we can apply to the market, to the industry, to the rest of the world to explain the value of Internet of Things in industry. I think most people understand or they think they understand the value of Internet of Things and consumer devices, uh, talking refrigerators and clever thermostats and self-driving cars and so forth. But the real value is going to be in industry, already is in industry. We're seeing it especially in manufacturing, but in many other areas as well. It's very clear that the benefits primarily of IIC membership are number one, participating in the ecosystem, finding the partners. If you're an end user of Internet of Things technology, finding the technology pr providers, the technology partners that can provide that stack and implement the use case you have in mind. If you're a technology provider, finding the end users, the banks, the manufacturers, the mining companies, the transportation companies that can provide the use case for your product. We bring them together in our testbed development group. But more than that, our technical working groups have developed architecture, the industrial internet reference architecture, security framework, the industrial internet security framework, clever name I know, uh, a terminology, vocabulary we call it, use cases, 
a business strategy approach for how to think about using the Internet of Things, uh, methodology approaches for implementing uh, Internet of Things technology in your industry. So we bring all that to the table and we make it possible to work together with other players in the ecosystem. So number one, technology. Number two, marketing and thought leadership. And number three, probably the most important, bringing together the ecosystem. So why would I want to be an Industrial Internet Consortium member, an IIC member? Clearly, if I'm a big company, I may be looking for partners, many of which are small companies. And by the way, more than 50% of our members are small companies, or small and medium-sized enterprises, under $50 million US in annual turnover. Small companies, it's not always as obvious. But in fact, if you've got a test bed that's being run by Bosch, Tech Mahindra, Cisco, and Real-Time Innovations, which one are you going to click on? Clearly, there's value for small companies as well. The other point is I would point out that it's valuable for users of this technology as well as vendors. I think vendors see the value more clearly, but users actually have more value because all of these industries are going to be disrupted. You're always better off disrupting your own industry rather than waiting for somebody else to do it for you. So let's start with IoT technology first when you ask about how widespread is the technology. Internet of Things technology is already with us and everywhere. You're carrying some, I'm carrying some. There are sensors of accelerometers and temperature sensors and all sorts of sensors that are in your mobile telephone. There are literally billions of mobile telephones. There are already billions of connected devices, Internet of Things devices in the world. Industrial Internet of Things, however, is just taking off, but it's starting to become hugely successful. Just our first testbed, which was launched in February of last year, 2015, led by Bosch Tech Mahindra and Cisco, our track and trace testbed, which is actually running live in Berlin, is now being rolled out. The results are being rolled out today to all 250 Bosch manufacturing sites worldwide. So 10 years, Internet of Things is everywhere. It's going to be in self-driving cars that talk to the roadbed, not just in the car that talk to each other. It's going to be in devices in our pockets, devices that are plugged into our bodies to check and make sure our health is safe. It's going to be in transportation devices, supply chain management, and every other area you can think of. 10 years is an infinite amount of time in the tech space. Clearly, in order to figure out how to apply Internet of Things technology in industry, you've got to do it. Some of those attempts to use Internet of Things technology in industry are going to be failures, but even those you'll learn from. Our role is to learn by doing. Again, I think it's important to understand that all of these industries, and I'm not talking about tech industries, I'm talking about banking and transportation and supply chain management and, and uh, manufacturing and all sorts of industries are going to be disrupted. It's our job to figure out those disruptions by making the disruption ourselves. So our role is build test beds build all the things that go around those test beds like business strategy and methodology and, and uh, architecture and security frameworks and so forth. But focus on those test beds and learn how to disrupt these markets. Our role is inventing how IoT is changing industry. The biggest barrier to the growth of the Internet of Things, quite clearly, is the mindset change. It's the transformation of organizations. It's people. Uh, I, you know, um, here at uh, Internet of Things Solutions World Congress 2016 in Barcelona, there was a great talk this morning in which uh, General Electric was talking about going to bed uh, a manufacturing company and waking up the next morning a software company. That's a, that's a great quote by Jeff Immelt, the CEO of General Electric. The realization that you have to change your organization, not necessarily by firing and hiring, but by retraining, by retreading, by understanding who your customer really is and how you're going to serve that customer, that's the big change and the single biggest change in applying Internet of Things technology or frankly any new technology in any industry, but especially these industries that have been around forever. Only one company, just to mention GE again, only one company has been on the Dow Jones since the beginning. There are 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. One company has been there since the beginning and is still there, and that's General Electric. So there's some hope that there are organizations, big organizations, that change with the times. This is going to be one of their biggest changes, and not just for them, but for everyone. And I don't just mean in the technology space, but in many industries.
Internet of Things technology is a team sport. Uh, I don't typically like that phrase, but it's correct in this case. It's all about getting over boundaries and connecting across boundaries, whether those are national boundaries, technology boundaries, corporate boundaries, or what have you. Obviously, there's never going to be a winner in IoT because the whole point is connecting across boundaries. So what you see here at the Internet of Things Solutions World Congress show in Barcelona is people finding partners. It's people working together, both from a technology development standpoint, but also from a product development standpoint and a product solutions and go-to-market standpoint, because that's how you're going to use this technology to connect across boundaries. So there is no such thing as a winner in this space. There's only the winning ecosystem, and we've built it. This has been a wonderful show. Our second show, Internet of Things Solutions World Congress 2016 in Barcelona, has been nothing short of a smash success. Not only is it twice as big as uh, last year's event, the 2015 event, it's twice as, twice as big in terms of Congress um, attendees, it's twice as big in terms of exhibition attendees, and the exhibit floor itself is twice as big as last year. More importantly though, you talk to the exhibitors and they say, people are not kicking the tires anymore. They're not coming to smell and taste, they're coming to buy because it's been proven by the test beds that we build and by other test beds from other organizations. People are coming out of the Congress sessions and saying, thank you for giving me a session in which we talk about a real use case, where we talk about a user of the technology, not how many connected devices they're going to be. Who cares? The interesting thing is what you do with that information that comes from those connected devices. This show has been nothing short of an enormous success and we're looking forward to 2017. If you do a survey today of especially users that are, that are thinking of applying Internet of Things in industry, or you do a survey today even of the vendors, they will all say the same things. We need standards, we need portability, interoperability, security, and privacy. Those are all important. But that's not the biggest issue today. The biggest issue is corporate transformation. It's changing the way organizations work. It's understanding how to deal with the societal disruption, the corporate disruption, and, and that is the biggest issue by far. There are some technical issues too, by the way. Uh, I think the biggest technical issue is how to deal with the fact that we have to do data analysis everywhere. Whether you call it fog or edge computing or, or, or distributed computing, it doesn't really matter, it's the same thing. The bandwidth will never be enough between here and there to get all the information I want to get from here to there. So I'm going to have to do some of the computing everywhere. And designing that architecture is hard. It's important, but it's hard. So that technical issue is a major one. And third, we have to figure out how to transform individuals. How do we train people? I have this conversation all over the world. I know the transformation is coming. I want my population to be ready for that transformation. What should I train them to do? They're being told all sorts of things. They're mostly being told, oh, data science. Data science is important. Of course, data science is important, even if it's called statistics, which is what it used to be called. But the reality is we don't know exactly what the new job titles are going to be. Data scientists, sure, but there will be others, especially when you're talking about building ecosystems and connecting across ecosystems. So we have to figure out not what to train people to do, but how to ensure that they are flexible. There are excellent nationwide training systems and retraining systems. I, I like to point at the German uh, Lander-based uh, training systems where they train and retrain people as, as uh, expertise and skills requirements change. Um, and I think flexibility is the most important thing to teach when you don't know what's coming and we don't know what's coming. And then of course, build test beds and learn what's coming by doing. Create the future, don't wait for it. Oh,